what the heck? Seriously, watching the keynote felt almost like a joke because the M1 Max is already insanely fast. And then they're just like, let's take two of them and put them together, bam. Ultra. I literally laughed when I saw this graphic. I already thought the M1 was crazy. Then we got Pro, which was like, holy crap, Max. And now we have Ultra, this massive tower of performance. I've been using the M1 Max MacBook Pro for a good few months now, and not once have I felt like I've hit the limit. And now they just through two of those together. The Mac Studio is possibly the most insane machine ever made for creatives, especially at this price point. 20 core CPU, 16 high performance cores, and four high efficiency cores, up to 64 core GPU and 32 core neural engine, 128 gigabytes of unified memory, which I don't even know if I can possibly utilize. I don't see any situation where I'm gonna need that much memory. Not to mention the media engine, which handles all the video codecs like H.264, H.265, and ProRes. That's all great on paper, but the real question is, will that make any difference for us filmmakers and content creators on a day-to-day -day basis? And to answer that, I have some very interesting results. The Mac Studio is really a new way of looking at the Pro setup. Let's forget about the Mac Pro for a second because that's only for a, a very specific high level of Pro that few of us will ever need. But now instead of something like the iMac Pro, we have the Mac Studio, which you can pair with anything you want, including the brand new studio display, which I'm really glad they came out with because the Pro Display XDR is very, very expensive, way too expensive for most of us to actually buy. The studio display starts at $1599, whereas the XDR is starting $4999. If you want the nano texture and tilt and height adjustable stand, then it's $2299. But still way cheaper than the Pro XDR with nano texture and the stand at a whopping $7,000. The studio display is a 27 inch 5k retina display built-in camera with center stage and studio microphones which is really handy for all of those conference video calls that we're doing all of the time nowadays it also has really nice built-in speakers and it's a little smaller than the pro xdr monitor the xdr is a 32 inch this is a 27 inch but it's also thinner so it feels quite a bit smaller than the pro xdr i actually have both displays here and if you look closely you can see a difference. The Pro XDR is definitely crispier and a little bit sharper, especially if you look at the icons and stuff like that. But the 5K studio display is beautiful. I love the colors, the brightness. It is a really nice, high quality display. And of course, remember that you can also use the studio display for something like your 14 inch MacBook Pro or the 16 inch, but I absolutely love this 14 inch MacBook Pro. I think it's my favorite laptop I've ever used in my whole life. I feel like it's the perfect size for all of the conditions that I'm editing, whether it's at the office or traveling or wherever it is, this I love, but it's nice to have more screen real estate also, so you could just have this at the office, plug it in, and now you have a beautiful 27 inch display. And we can actually afford one or even two of these, maybe three if you're going crazy, whereas with the Pro XDR, it's pretty hard to afford two of those. Overall, for pro use, I'm pretty happy that we're moving away from the iMac. The iMac is a beautiful machine. It's always been the nicest looking computer out there. It's literally almost like an art piece in your room. It's that nice. But for pro use, I would much rather the computer and display not be tied together because over time you will need to upgrade the performance of the computer and the display might still be really nice. So it kind of sucks to have to upgrade both at the same time when you could just swap out the computer and get more performance and keep using that same display. And even though I am a pretty big fan of the look of the Mac Studio, I would imagine most people would say they like the look of the iMac better. 
but for pro users, I think we care less about the looks and more about the performance and how much it's gonna cost us at the end of the day. The Mac Studio is super minimalist. It basically just has a nice logo on top, two USB-C Thunderbolt plugs on the front, and one SD card reader, which I will take. The air goes through the small holes on the bottom and then out the back, and then on the back we have four more USB-C Thunderbolt ports, an Ethernet, two USB a and a pro audio jack. The Mac Studio fits nicely under the display so it's really unassuming, doesn't take up too much desk space and you could even possibly travel with it unlike something like an iMac or let alone the Mac Pro. I think MKBHD used to actually travel around with an iMac Pro when he was at like conventions doing videos outside of the office, which is <laughs> just crazy, massive dedication. Uh, well done MKBHD, but uh, the Mac Studio is, is a little bit easier to carry around. They even, uh, the box it comes with is just really high quality. Uh, that sounds weird saying that about a box, but it's really high quality and even has a little handle up top so you could easily transport the Mac Studio in the box that it comes in. And holy crap, this thing is fast. CPU performance is 60% faster than a Mac Pro 28 core Xeon. And GPU is 80% faster than the Mac Pro. What? Those numbers are absolutely crazy, but what does this actually mean for real world use? And I haven't had a ton of time to test it out, but they did ship it with a project that has a bunch of 8K ProRes footage. And guess how many layers of 8K ProRes video you can have playing at the exact same time. 18, 18 layers of 8K ProRes footage and you can still throw on motion graphics and it plays back perfectly smoothly, no issues at all. Absolutely insane. I haven't had any issues with my M1 Max MacBook Pro. It's been absolutely perfect. No lagging, no bugging out. It's been so nice. And this is even faster, even more performance. And then I did an export test in Final Cut. I wasn't sure were we gonna see really much of an improvement here? So I didn't have my hopes up too high. This is where it gets a little bit crazy. On my M1 Max MacBook Pro fully specced out, for a one minute clip from my Sony camera, it took 69 seconds to export that in Final Cut. On the Mac Studio, it took 38 seconds. 38 seconds, that's almost 50%, 45% faster export than on the M1 Max, which was already crazy fast, mind boggling. I was like, what is going on? This is 45% faster. <laughs> I, I don't even know what to say. That's, ac that's actually crazy. The amount of time that's gonna save so many people I'll take it. And it's really nice. On my M1 Max, I've already been using H.265 video instead of H.264, which if you don't know, it's basically just a more efficient codec, so the file sizes are much smaller, but it is a little bit harder on your computer. M1 Max, totally fine. Mac Studio, no issues at all. So you get to save a whole bunch of data and a whole bunch of money on data storage. This is a full on Pro machine. I don't even know if it gets any faster than this for filmmakers and creatives. And all of that starting at $2,000. Now that is the M1 Max version. For the fully specced M1 Ultra, it's $7,999, which is still, that's a lot of money, a crazy amount of money, but 
that's pretty doable for a lot of creative professionals, whereas something like the Mac Pro, that starts to be at a level where most creative professionals just can't ever afford that. And also a Mac Studio fully maxed out is complete <laughs> overkill for most creatives. You do not need to max this thing out. But I love that it's overkill because it means that I can use it for many years to come and it's not gonna be outdated in just like a year or two. It's not too long ago that I felt like uh, uh, computers were just not keeping up with the video codecs and the, uh, the 4K, 8K and just felt like you couldn't use any of those things without doing proxies and all of this stuff. And now all of a sudden M1 Max comes out and I'm totally fine. All of my editing needs are completely fine. And then we have the M1 Ultra Max Studio and it's like way more than any of us will ever need for editing uh, unless we all start shooting 16K like next year. 18 layers of 8K footage, absolutely mind boggling. Never have we had such powerful machines to help us do the things that we wanna do, to tell the stories that we want. The 3D motion graphic designers are gonna love it. The video editors, the Photoshop people, the designers, all of those people now have this like next level that can be unlocked. And I just can't wait to see what everybody does with something like the Mac Studio. Apple is absolutely dominating the market for creatives when it comes to their displays, their powerful and efficient chips, and just overall performance of their computers. And I, for one, am very happy.